All right, this is a quiz 10 study guide, quizzes tomorrow. So here we go. All right, number one asks, uh, if triangle STU is congruent to triangle KLM, which of the following can, uh, can you not conclude as being true? Not conclude as being true. Um, I'm just gonna do them because I'm recording this and I need to post it to the, uh, to the resources page. So look, S and K are in the same location. So S is congruent to K. So that's not an answer. We're looking for the one that's not true. All right, TU congruent to LM. TU is the second and third letter. LM, second and third letter. That's true. T congruent to L. T is in the middle. L is in the middle. That's true. ST, first two letters congruent to KM, first and third letters. All right, those two are not true. All right, because of where the location of the vertices sits in the description, you can determine what's true and what's not true. All right, number, number two, which congruent statement does not necessarily describe the triangle shown if DEF is congruent to FGH? So all they're gonna do is reorder the letters and you gotta determine which reorder is not true. So they took DEF and they changed it to EFD. So if they went EFD, okay, EFD, they went, they changed this to the second letter, third letter first, then this has to be second, third, first, and it is. So that's not an answer. Then they changed the letters to F-E-D. So look, they just reversed them. They went third letter, second letter, first letter. So this needs to be third, second, first, and it is. So that would be true. Then they went E-D-F again, or no, they went E-D-F. So they went second, first, third. So in this second description, they went second, first, third. So those would be congruent. And then finally, answer D, they went EFD, which is second, third, first, and then they went second, first, third. See it? Not gonna be true. All right, they didn't change the letters in the same order. All right, short answer number one. If BCDE is congruent to OPQR, then CD is congruent to, look, look where CD is. It's the two letters in the middle. Gonna be congruent to the two letters in the middle. So that's gonna be PQ. Where they sit in their description determines what they're congruent to in the other description. In problem number two, this says angle ACB. Angle ACB is right here. It's this angle. That's ACB. It's got two tick marks in it. Is congruent to, it's gonna be the angle. It's got two tick marks in it, so it's right here. All right, and that can be described as NPM, or you could call it M, P, N. Either of those descriptions describe this angle P right here correctly. You might just see it as angle P. All right, so those are all three good answers. Number three, given that QRS is congruent to TUV. QS, all right, that's the first and third, is 2V plus four. And TV, 
TV, that's your first and third letter here. 5V minus 8. Find the length of QS and TV. So based on where these vertices sit in their descriptions, they sit in the same locations. So QS is congruent to TV. So your 2V plus 4 is equal to 5V minus 8. You can subtract 2V from each side. 4 is going to equal 3V minus 8. Then you can add 8. 12 equals 3V. Then you can divide by 3. So 4 is equal to V. So then you can pick either expression. All right, we can say QS equals 2 times 4 plus 4. So QS equals 8 plus 4, which is 12. And TV is equal to the same, so TV is also equal to 12. So 12 and 12. Same concept here. ABC is congruent to PQR. Angle B, which is right in the middle right here. And angle Q, right in the middle. Those two angles are congruent to each other. Find the measure of B and the measure of Q. All right, so the expressions, since the angles are congruent, the expressions are equal to each other. So 5V plus 2 is equal to 6V minus 4. You can subtract 5V from each side. Two is equal to V minus four. You can add four to each side. And six equals V. So if V is equal to six, and you need angle B and angle Q, your B is going to be equal to 5 times 6 plus 2. And 5 times 6 is 30 plus 2 is 32. Q is 6V minus 4. So we go 6 times 6 minus 4. 36 minus 4 is 32. So there's your two angle measures. In number five, we got a paper airplane. The measure of angle B equals the measure of angle BCD, which equals 90. So watch. I'll this up for you. The measure of angle B. Right here, it's 90. The same as BCD, BCD, so this one's 90. And the measure of BAD is 132. So BAD, this is 132. Find the measure of GHE. All right, GHE. That's this angle right up here. Well, angle GHE, which is the third, fourth, and first letter, is congruent to angle CDA, which is this angle right here. So if you find a measure of CDA, it's going to be the same as GHE. So look, in this shape on the left, it's got four sides. Shapes with four sides, all of the angles sum 360. So you're going to say here that GHE 
it's going to be equal to it's equal to 360 minus 132 minus 90 and minus the other 90. Forty-eight degrees. All right, GHE is forty-eight degrees. Angle ADC is also forty-eight degrees. All right, number six. The two triangles are congruent as suggested by their appearance. Find the value of F. The diagrams are not to scale. So we're just going to do all of these while we're here. These triangles are congruent. That means their corresponding sides are the same. So I'm going to start with this 90 degree angle. If that angle is 90, this angle is 90. If this bottom leg is three in the triangle on the left, then the bottom leg in the triangle on the right is equal to three. If the right leg on the right is equal to four, then the right leg on the left is equal to four. If the hypotenuse on the right is equal to five, then the hypotenuse on the left is equal to five. If the top angle on the left is equal to 62, well then the top angle on the right is equal to 62. And if the bottom angle on the left, or I'm sorry, and the bottom left angle in the right triangle is 28, then the bottom left angle in the left triangle is 28. All right? So all of the corresponding parts in the triangles are congruent to each other because you were told that the triangles are congruent. In number seven, you're named to you're asked to name the angle included by the sides NM and MP. Now you may see this question with or without a drawing. Name the angle included in the sides NM and MP. You can answer that without a drawing because there's an M in both descriptions. So angle M is the included angle. So angle M. Because you're talking about this side, NM, and you're talking about side MP, those two sides form angle M. So that's the included angle. All right, and then finally, number eight. State whether triangle ABC, the red one on the left, and AED, AED, are congruent, justify your answer. All right. So look at side AC. Side AC is congruent to side AD. All right, that's marked. If this angle D here and the triangle on the right is 120, and you've got this 60 degree angle here and the angle to the left of it, those are a linear pair. So this angle is 120. Side BC has two tick marks, and side DE has two tick marks. And side BA is equal to eight, and side AE is equal to eight. So are the triangles congruent? Yes. They're congruent by, you got a side, side, side. You got three sides of one triangle congruent to three sides of another triangle. So they're congruent by side, side, side. 
and look what else you got. You got side included angle, included angle, and side of one triangle congruent to side included angle and side of another triangle. So for two reasons, the triangles are congruent. They're congruent by side, 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 and side, angle, side. All right, everybody got it? Any questions on that study guide? Yes. Hang on one second then. Let me 